In Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1, it says, Wisdom has built her house and she has hewn out her seven pillars. Wisdom has built her house and she has hewn out her seven pillars. And I'm excited to open uh, a new series this morning that will impact the necessity of un, uh, uh, basically building on strong foundations, establishing or reestablishing pillars in our lives. I was able to observe uh, this last year. Uh, house right across the street from me was just in, in incredible disrepair. It was uh, this older place and the neighbors were looking at it. It had been abandoned and it was falling apart. We actually were kind of hoping somebody would come and set a match to it. <laughs> actually, I think somebody called the fire department and said, hey, y'all want to practice, you know? And uh, that didn't really work for them. But it was time to go. And so there was a builder that came and, and bought the lot and had a vision for the place. And it was amazing because uh, they, they, they pulled that old trailer house out. And basically, as soon as they pulled it out, he, 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 he put in a new foundation he dug. And he didn't use the old foundation. He dug down. And it was kind of interesting because as I was watching this process, you know, it was right across the street from me. You kind of, you know, you kind of pay attention to those things. And I, I recognize, you know what? He didn't try to build on the old foundation. He tore that old foundation out and he put a new foundation in. And, and, and it really represents what God is doing in the lives of people, uh, I believe, across the nation and across the world. This builder with some vision came and, 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 and he purchased it. And it was fascinating because you could see that not only the, the place, but the surrounding property began to, to look a little differently. Because the vision on the property was different. And, and, and it was also being built with a purpose in mind. It was not, it was not built by, uh, to be an auto parts store, to be a, a hay barn. And you could tell what the purpose was because you would just look at the foundation. You would say, okay, there's a foundation. It looks like there's going to be you know, maybe, maybe three bedrooms there and a, a couple baths there. And so you could tell right away the foundation determined the purpose of the house. And the house was built with a purpose in mind that it would actually bless and be a habitation for a family. See, that's what God is doing in the earth. He's drawing people to Him. And He's saying, listen, I, you can't live on the, the old foundation. I'm going to pour a new foundation into your life. That's Jesus Christ. And He's going to build some things because you can't carry what God has designed for you on that old foundation. It's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be totally new. And it was being built with a future in mind. See, God is a builder and we're created in His image. Can you look at somebody and say, you're creating God's image. And I said something last week as, well, as, as we were concluding. Listen, we're not Jesus, but we're a lot more like Him than what we used to be. And we're created in the image of God. In, in, in 1 Corinthians 3, 10-13, Paul writes, according to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. So God is a builder and has a blueprint for you and I to follow. How many of you would ever have somebody build you something without the blueprint? I mean, I, I, boy, we got builders in here. Robbie and I were blessed a number of years ago to have a house built for us. Man, I'm glad I looked at the blueprint first. I wouldn't hire a builder and said, well, how are you going to build it? Well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. Just going to wing it. And God has a purpose for our life, and there's a blueprint. And this blueprint is a foundation with a cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ. And there are support pillars throughout that we will use. I'm going to use to illustrate foundational core values as we move on. Core values and pillars, so to speak, that are designed to carry you through this life, not just to survive, but to thrive. God desires for you to thrive. This is not just a survival game. This is not survivor. This is basically God wants you to thrive. 
And I think it's a good time to be reminded in our lives of some foundational truths in our lives. And if we're honest, a lot of things that were foundational have been shaken in our world. Can I get an amen? In Psalm 82, 5, it says, They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. How many of you recognize that there's some shaking that's going on? We've seen foundations of family that have been shaken and broken. We've seen foundations and definitions of marriage broken, shaken. We've seen the foundations, definitions, and identities of people that are broken. And they're confused. And despite all of this, God has a plan. God still has a blueprint. God still has some foundational things. God still has some pillars. God still has some truths. It says in Isaiah 28.16, Therefore, says the Lord God, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone for the foundation firmly placed, and he who believes in it will not be disturbed. Now, th- 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 this is a great passage of peace right here. He who believes in it will not be disturbed. So there is an ability for you and I to walk through this life. No matter what is happening, social media, CNN, Fox News, there's a way that we can walk through this life and not be disturbed if we put our trust in the Lord. There's a way that you can walk that's different from how any other person walks that doesn't know the Lord. There can be an incredible peace in your life when the cornerstone of Jesus, foundations and pillars are firmly placed. And you and I are also part of the plan that's unfolding. See, this is, this is amazing. Because when we look once again in Isaiah 58.12, it says, Those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins and you will raise up the age-old foundations. Somebody say foundations. And you will be called the repairer of the breach the restore of the streets in which to dwell. So this is an amazing passage of Scripture right here because what God is saying is that He has a plan and you're part of it. And there's a part of this where there's a restoration that's happening. Because when you look and you break down and unpack this passage, it says you're going to be rebuilders. And you're going to be, you're going to raise up age old foundations. You'll be called to be repairers and restorers. And you and I are partners of this great rescue plan through Christ. And we must be part and do what Jesus loves. Can I just say, Amen? So let's unpack passage of Scripture in Luke chapter 6. In Luke 6, verse 47 through 48, this is Jesus, and He's saying, Everyone who comes to Me and hears My words and acts on them I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation. And the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed. And the ruin of that house was great. So we're talking about foundations and we're talking about pillars. And there's a foundation I want to talk to you about this morning. And it's the Word of God. It's one of the greatest pillars that you can establish in your home, in your life, in your walk, in your family. It's right there. And how many of you, if you're honest, would say, you know what? I like to put things together without reading the instructions. Come on, I'm getting some honest hands here this morning. I, I mean, there's I, I, I bought something the other day. I mean, I mean that last, last little whatchamacallit or doohickey or whatever it is. And I bought something, and, and when I was reading the reviews of it, you know, people were saying, oh, it's so easy. I didn't even have to read the instructions. And I'm like, you know what? That's kind of that that rebel nature that we have at times. Now, I, I'm a lot better about reading instructions than I used to. Because what I found was I would get something and I would tr- I'd get it three quarters of the way put together and then I'd find out, oh man, that bolt doesn't go there and I'd have to disassemble the whole thing. Or I'd get it all put together and I'd have parts left over. 
for a while I liked having parts left over. And then I realized, man, I got a whole bucket of parts that are left over from all this stuff that I put together. And I must not be putting stuff together quite right. But that's how we are. Really? How many of you would fly with a pilot that basically didn't look at any instructions? Well, have you ever flied that plane before? No. Have you read the manual? No. I'm not getting on that plane with you. How many of you would have somebody like do some surgery without the surgeon doing some instructions? Do I have that little clip? Can we play that little clip right there? I thought this was fun. Sponge. How's everything look? Looks good. It's real good. What's his BP? 120 over 80. Okay, folks. Close him up. You're not Dr. Stewart. No. But I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. See, yeah, you cut that part of it. See, we have a tendency... Even when we got the blueprint, even when we have the instructions, we have a tendency to bypass them or forget them or not look at them for a while. I got this figured out. I don't know about you, but I'm not smart enough to do that. I used to think I was smart enough to do that. And then time and experience and trials and troubles and all of this kind of stuff recognizes I got to get back to some value, some core value. So I got to get back, I got to read the direct, I got to read the manual. Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. Right? But it's more than this. It should be foundation, it should be foundation, it should be a pillar. Ever been around someone who seemed to disregard any instruction? I'm, I'm convinced that there's so many people that just build their houses on sand, they build their life. Jesus has just finished the Sermon on the Mount. And his closing words are the parable of the two builders. I think that's very important. The two houses, the same materials, they looked the same, except what was underneath them was different. See, there, there, there's people that can look like they're pretty good on the outside, but foundational stuff, and especially when pressure comes, you find out. How many of you recognize that it's really, it's really easy to kind of walk when things are going really good? But you find that when pressure's on you, when the pressure's on you, when things aren't going right, when there's, when there's difficulties, when there's disasters, when there's tragedies, that's when you find out what your foundation's things are, what your pillars are, where your core values are. And, and Jesus is really trying to remind us of something that's very, very important. Because the success of the first builder was not that he only came to Jesus, because it said that he came to Jesus and that he heard Jesus because it said that he heard Jesus, but that he acted on it. He came, he heard, and then he obeyed. And a lot of times we come and we don't hear. Have you ever like engaged in a conversation with somebody where you recognize they're just not listening to you? He's like, hey, is anybody there? Right here, eyes right here. Well, people will come to Jesus, but they won't hear Him. Or people will come and they will hear, but they won't act. And there's really, there's a great formula right here. And the above passage about the two builders said, He dug deep so He had a foundation. He could find the rock to build on. He cleared away some stuff. Now that's the, that's the dynamic that's so difficult in our lives as believers. Stuff. 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 We get distracted. Maybe it's not the devil, but it's distraction. And we find ourselves basically just kind of being diverted. And then you look back and go, wow, how did I get so far away from where my roots were, from where my foundations? There may be people in here this morning that you have recognized you have wandered away from some of your roots and some of your foundation. I'm telling you, this is a great time right now to say, I, I want to get back to those. Can I get an Amen. And see, some people just want to add some Jesus experience to their life. Oh yeah, well this is cool. Jesus, fill in the blank. Well, I like Jesus and you know, Buddha's awesome and this is awesome and this is awesome. I just, you know, that's, that's really cool. 
But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So the, the really isn't like this just huge, you know, stuff, you know, you know. It's like we want to do a, 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 a Jesus potluck. Digging deep seems to animate clearing away stuff, clearing away some sand. Those three things come, draw near, hear God's word to you, obey, take action. So you're going to build something in your life. One way or the other, you're going to build something in your life because you've been created in the image of God and God is a builder. What are you going to build? And these are foundational things that are really important as we, as we kind of go on for, for the next three... Uh, who knows how long it's going to take. <laughs> Could be three months, man. There's enough stuff that we can cover. But you're going to build something. James 1, verses 23-24. through 24. It says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. A mirror will reflect who you are. Amen? I mean, there's been times in my mind, man, I'm 30 years old in my mind. But when I look in the mirror, I go, nope, that mirror don't look like 30-something. <laughs> but then when I walk away from the mirror... If I'm not careful, I start thinking that this is who I am. I forget who I really am. And James is talking about this. He says you need to be more than just a hearer of the Word. You need to be a doer of the Word. And then a lot of times what people slip into is like, well, that just sounds like this real legalistic thing. Listen, we're not talking about legalism. We're talking about holiness. And we're talking about wanting the things of the kingdom so much in your life that you just, you just love Jesus and you want to obey Him. Don't be the guy who has a set of blueprints but never builds anything. So first of all, be a follower and a pursuer of Jesus. Can, can, I just, can, you, can, you, get that, can you get that dynamic? Be a pursuer of Jesus. We know how to pursue things. You guys have heard me teach on this before. Men know how to pursue stuff out in the woods, right? My wife knows how to pursue a sale. She's talking to me the other day. She says, honey, I just found a great deal on um, whatever it was. <laughs> I was half listening, you could tell. <laughs> Once I heard great deal, then I just tuned out. Like. She loves thrift stores. You want to bless my wife? Just say, hey, let's go thrift store shopping. And then it would bless me. You know what I do? I'll drop her off. She'll, she'll have it mapped out. Hey, drop me off that one. That's a really good, that, 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 that's a big one. I'll drop it off and I'll take a nap in the car. Or I'll be praying, you know, with my eyes closed. But be a pursuer of Jesus. Because when you pursue, that means it's, it's relationally, you want to walk. Secondly, learn how to listen, how to communicate. I just gave you a great lesson how not to do that. <laughs> Learning how to listen. Listen, do you, do, you, do you realize that God has given you two ears and one mouth and you should actually listen twice as much as you talk? Can I just say that? Don't want to offend you. I'm telling you what, if you want people to like you, just listen to them. Because people like to talk about themselves. If you're a listener, you will have no lack of people around you that just want to like, because he listens to me. She, he, she listens to me. She hears me. We are actually called to learn how to listen. And we need to learn how to listen to God. And to communicate with God. We need to learn how to communicate with Him. And thirdly, act on it. Now listen, ex I, I want to talk to you about learning how to listen to God and to talk with God. And communication with God is more than just memorizing Scripture. It's understanding that, that actually God wants to speak to you. And He'll speak to you through a lot of different things. You know, through, there's a still small voice. There's the Word. The Bible says He speaks through creation. God will speak through you through circumstances. God will speak through you through other people. You know, one of the things that always kind of I thought was interesting was here is Saul on the road to Damascus. 
encounters Jesus, uh, you know, hears a, a loud voice, gets knocked off his donkey, and, uh, and Jesus speaks to him and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Do you think that Jesus had Saul's complete attention at that time? But then what does he tell him to do? He says, I want you to get up and I want you to go see a man named Ananias. And he's going to tell you what to do. God will use other people to speak to you. In the mouth of two or three, let everything be confirmed. So there's different ways, and we're not going to go so much into that, but I want to just, I want to just challenge you because there's a rebuilding and a, a reestablishing of pillars and, and foundations in your life that are so important. John 6, verse 63 says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus answered, and it is said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So when I began to read the Word of God, something supernatural began to happen in the rebuilding process of my life. When I, when I started reading, the, 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 I try to read the Word of God every day. I would encourage you, open it up. Read it every day. Feed, uh, your, feed yourself. I mean, allow the Word of God to be that bread that feeds you. It's real important. There's times when you don't understand it. But the Holy Spirit will bring some revelation. And there's passages where like, I have this like one-year Bible. It's a great tool. I'm just giving you a great tool. It's called the one-year Bible. You read a passage of the Old Testament, a New Testament, uh, a Psalm, and a Proverb. Every day. It doesn't take very long. And there's times when it can be... Like I was reading Job the other day. Man, I got depressed. I'm like, God, show me. I know there's some really good stuff in Job and there's some great things about how getting... But I'm reading Job and I'm going, oh my goodness. And then there's times like when you're you know, in the book of Numbers or you're... Uh, uh, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And, or Deuteronomy or Leviticus. And it's, I mean, I love Genesis. Genesis is awesome. But then you get into this like, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so. Begat, so-and-so. Okay, that's cool. They had lots of kids. That's awesome. <laughs> Let's get through it. And sometimes what people do is they'll say, well, I don't understand the Bible and I, it, it just, it's just, you know, so, so, so I don't read. Listen, do you understand every instruction manual that you read the first time that you read it? I don't. Maybe there's some rocket scientists in here, but I'm not one of them. I, I mean, I got a, a doohickey the other day, and I basically, and it had this big old, and I'm just like, oh man, I got to go get a cup of coffee, and I got to get my glasses, and I got to sit down, and I, I had to read the thing three times. Before it made sense. And I'm actually, I think I'm a pretty smart guy. I got great grades in school. And I'm like, I got to read this thing because it's just, you know, it's just, oh my goodness. But listen, the Word of God is living and active. Uh, Jesus said it's the Word, it's the Word of life. I mean, it's, it's spirit and it's life. In 2 Timothy, it says, all scripture is breathed out by God. That's God breathed, and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correct. Well, I don't like the reproof part of the word. I don't like it when somebody tells me I'm not doing the right thing. Do you? But you know what I've learned to do? I've learned to love it when God speaks to me. He says, Hey, kind of lost your temper right there. You probably need to go apologize for that little matitude you just had. And I love it because it leads to life. See, when, 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 when something happens and God corrects me, and it could, be, it could be God speaking to me, or it could be me you know, uh, basically coming across something that's God-breathed in the Word, and it just, oh. And then I, I act on it. It usually builds relationship. You know, if the Word of God talks about let no uh, bitter root spring up in you, and I have to go, whoa. I think I got a bit of a bitter root. 
And then I have to ask the Lord, okay, well, Lord, what's, what, what's this all about? Yeah, you, you got a bitter root. Maybe you got a, you got some bitterness, uh, you know, maybe with a family member. And then I go and I act on it. God's spoken to me. And then basically there's some restoration because I'm actually obeying. I'm, I'm being disciplined. I'm being reproved by the word of God for correction and training in righteousness. God wants to train you in righteousness, right relationships. How many would like to be a lot better in relationships than what you are right now? Wouldn't that be amazing? Take the Bible. Open it. The Bible is not just paper and pen. There's something supernatural that transpires when we read it. There's something that happens. It's not just... I mean, growing up, I grew up in, and most of my childhood was in church. I used to, I used to just think that there's a reverence that I was brought up with to, to the Word of God. And I remembered like, man, I don't even want to drop, as a kid, I don't even want to drop my Bible. Because that's the Word of God. You know what? I think we've lost some reverence when it comes to the Word of God. And, and we have to understand that God has given us something. That's not the only way that God speaks to us. He speaks to us with His still small voice. He reveals Himself to creation. He reveals Himself to people. There's a lot, there's like... There's a, a lot of different ways that God speaks, but primarily, when you, when, you don't, when you don't make this a value in your life, what happens is you're taking one of the major components that's God-breathed and you're saying, I don't need it. You're saying, I think I can walk through life without the instruction manual. See, when it comes to reading the Bible, there's a resistance issue. Can I get an amen? Any of you feel like there's a resistance? Come on, you're in church, y'all. God's here. You know what I'm saying? And, and so, so it's like, I'd rather read like a bow hunting magazine. I, I'm just being honest with you. I'd rather read an you know, architectural magazine. I'd rather read a stuff. Or you run into some people, I just don't read. I don't like to read. There's a resistance. And the resistance is because God understands that, listen, if you will hide this Word in your heart, that basically there's a supernatural divine transformation that becomes to happen. See, now you're not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God's renewing your mind. Even when I don't, there's passages I just don't really understand and I have, and what it does, it makes me dig. I don't really understand that. I think I'll just forget that part of it. It actually makes me dig. I need to know what the, what are the, you know what I did? In that first passage of scripture, it says, wisdom builds her house and the seven pillars. I had to go look up the seven pillars. What's the seven pillars mean? Because I want it, it, it challenges me. I believe there is a discipline issue. Relationships require communication to prosper. You want, you want to try it out? Stop talking to your wife and see if that does well for you. It doesn't. In fact, a lot of times the biggest frustration people have is we don't have communication. We're not talking. Well, how would you have a, a, a relationship with God that prospers without talking to Him, without spending some time with Him? I know that when I spend time with my wife, with my sons, with my grandchildren, there's, there's just something there. There's something there. Like you take, you take some of my, my grandchildren. Now they're in the you know, twos and threes and up to six. But especially the younger ones, if I haven't been around for a while, they're kind of like shy. Anybody else ex experience that? If I, they're, they're a little shy. It takes them a little bit to warm up. They kind of look at, well, part of it because I'm just, I'm just stinking tall, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I mean, can you imagine a two-year-old looking up at this guy right here? But what happens is that I continue to communicate and pretty soon they warm up. And then Pop is their best friend. It takes communication. It takes communication. When you begin to press through resistance and form some discipline and make the Word of God a priority in your life, things that were broken began to be repaired. When you overcome the resistance and you form the discipline and you understand the Word of God is spirit and life, that the architect and master builder wants to take what was lost, was broken, and he wants to actually speak life into you. There's a world that superimposes a false identity. 
And when you don't know who you are, God will establish you. When you're confused about your identity, God will say, listen, you're mine, you're created in my image, and I have a plan for you. And you're not going to get that if you don't place yourself in a a position to say, God, I need to hear what you say. I don't want to hear what someone says about me. I need to hear what you say about me. Because what you say about me is actually going to form some foundational pillar values uh, structure in my life that will, will basically help me walk through those storms.